the room get yourself a little garlic? Then think so, we're going to sell it over here then. For 2,002, anywhere else. Last round. With you, madam. 2,200 over there. It's going, it's going, and it has gone. Thank you, madam. Well done. Lady over there. 2,002. We move seamlessly to lot number three. Again, uh, you don't have to go too far. This is a wonderful Christmas stocking treat for you. We're going to start with a trip on the London Eye to see London in its winter glory. You will then have a driver who will take you to the wonderful St Pancras Renaissance Hotel where you can catch a train to France. But before you go to France, you can have a wonderful champagne tea. But don't go to France, because after that, your chauffeur will whisk you down to the London Coliseum to see one of Christmas's great theatres, the Nutcracker. So, two of you, trip on the London Eye, personal chauffeur to take you to St Pancras Renaissance Hotel for tea, champagne, and then an evening performance of the Nutcracker. Can we go in at 400 only? That's 200 a ticket. 400, thank you, about a 400 on bid for this wonderful lot at four, five hundred, five, six. We go six, seven, thank you, sir. Seven, eight hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred, nine hundred, nine hundred. Looking for a thousand. Where are you? Nine hundred, nine hundred, one thousand. Back to my original bidder at 1,000, 1,000, 2, I can't see you hiding behind the call. 1,002, madam. 1,004? 1,002, then over here. At 1,200 only. Not sure where the bidder was, but it's over there somewhere. Have you got them? 1,002. Let's go 1,004 for Marie Curie. At 1,002. Another 200 is another 10 hours nursing. 1,002 at the moment. Any advance at 1,200? Madam, how about 13? 13, well done, thank you. 1,300 hours. It all helps. 1,003, back to the original bidder then. Selling this side at 1,300. Last chance for anyone else? 13, 14 new bidder now. 14 has it. 15, thank you, madam. 1,500 now at 15, 16. 16, we go 1600. Madam, talk to me. 16 at the moment here at 1600. Selling a heading on table three. 16 has the lot. We'll go in ones if it helps you. 1600 has it. It's going to go, madam. 16, 17, 18, 1800. 1800. Quick discussion going on between husband and wife. Good decision, sir. 1900. 2000. 2000 has it. She says no more, sir. Why don't you go another one? 2000. 2000 here with this lady at 2000 pounds selling at 2000. Wonderful evening and day in London at 2000. 2002. Back he comes. 2004. 2004. Shall I come and see you, sir? Might be a bit of a fruitless journey. Are you sure? If I come all the way, sir. What does that mean? Two, four. Two, four. Shall I sit next to your wife and talk to her? That's much more likely. So much trouble here. Go, go, go two six. I'm a lovely man. Two six. Two six. Well done, madam. He says no more. Two six gets me out of trouble. I do cause quite a few divorces in my line of work, but we're here at two six. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. But we're going to go there. Two thousand six hundred pound. I go and sold to you, madam. Well done. Two six. Fantastic. Okay, shh. 
Now we've given you a couple of London treats, now we've got a fantastic Spanish treat for you. Very kindly given to us tonight, today, by Jamie Beecroft. Jamie, wherever you are, thank you very much indeed. Fantastic. Don't be put off, it says in your programme that you have to take it between the 13th and 20th of April. Jenny's just got a message to me saying that provided it's not July or August, she is open to discussions on this date. So you're not completely tied to the 13th to the 20th. So this three bedroom apartment in Guadalmina, Marbella on the golf course, very close to the beach club. Numerous facilities, it's got tennis courts, pools, beach views, drinks, lunch, dinner. Close to Marbella, down the road from Porta Banus and Marbella. And just further down the road to sunny Gibraltar. So, the six of you, six of you, to go to Spain for a whole week in this luxurious apartment. You don't have to play golf, but if you play golf, that's a bonus. Can we go in at, we're going at 200 pounds ahead. 1,200 again to start me, please. 1,200, 1,200, well done, table two, thank you. 1,200 is the opening bid. At 1,200, gentle opening bid. At 1,200, 1,200. Who wants to go 14? You do, sir. 1400 here. 1400 now on table one. At 1400, slowly but surely. At 1400, I'm bid by this gentleman here. 16 behind you now, sir. 1600 now. 18, sir. She likes me. She didn't like, she didn't like London, did she? 1600. 18, thank you, madam. 1800 now. 18 over here on table three. 1800. Mr. 18. Who wants to go 2000, madam? 2000, thank you. 2000, where are you? There you are. Where? You still bidding, madam? Got to be quick. 2000, I've been in front. 2000. It's like being an umpire at Wimbledon. 2000 at the moment. Where are we? There are 2000 on table two. Who's going to go 2002 for Marie Curie? 2000 has this Spanish lot of 2000. Are you sure? Are you all done? 2002, thank you. 2002, 2004, 2004. Slowly getting the idea of this auction business. 24, you can be twice better. 26, 25, 25, it all helps, thank you. 2500, I have been now. At 2,600, madam. Could have had it there. We'll keep it months for you. 2,700, thank you. 2,700. At 2,007. Keep going, madam. 2,008. 2,008. Let's go 9. 2,009. Let's go 3,000. We have been 3,000. At the back there, 3,000. Thank you, madam. Then for Spain, 3,000. Hardly enough, but it's a great bid at 3,000. Over here, 3,002. <laughs> my next charity auction is in Moscow tomorrow night, and I've got to be at the airport by 8 o'clock. We'll go 3 2, okay? Have a drink, and that always helps. 3,002, well done, madam, thank you. At 3,002. Wow, get me out of trouble, madam. 3,004? Yeah, go on. It's against the hen party on table 10. 3,002. Any advance at 3-2? Then I think you have it, madam. Last chance for Spain. One more. Surely. No? Sadness. 3-2 then. It's all yours, madam. Thank you so much. Sold. 3-2. Almost halfway through. Shh. So 
Solaria Racing. I hope you've seen um, the Crockley Lawn uh, Racing brochures on your table. It's a wonderful uh, racing establishment run by Paul Weber. And we're very lucky to have tonight uh, Simon Double here, who is uh, Simon standing up. He's a good looking gentleman with lots of hair in the very corner there. This is a two part lot. Again, Solario have been very generous at supporting Barry Curie over the years. First part is two of you will go down to Paul Weber's Crockery Lawn uh, Racing Establishment, which is near Banbury in Oxfordshire. You get to see the horses uh, training. You get to see the indoor school, the pool that they use to keep fit. And then um, Paul and Simon, the race manager, run Solario. You can have a champagne tea with them, with canapes and all sorts of nice things. So that's one day. Then the sometime further on, or beforehand, whatever, this is a chance to go to Newbury Races, two of you. Tickets for the grandstand enclosure, three course lunch with champagne and a table in the Reiskers restaurant. So a fantastic day at Newby Races, pre-seeded or whatever if you want to go, at, well, when you go to see Paul Weber's racing establishment in Banbury. So, can we start at a, shh, shh, a thousand please, a thousand. A thousand looking for a thousand to start with. A thousand round bid. Table 22. We have one thousand bid at one thousand. Any advance at one thousand is it? We bid at one thousand. Let's go twelve hundred somewhere else. At twelve hundred, thank you, man. Twelve hundred. At twelve hundred ahead of your table 22. Twelve hundred round bid. At twelve hundred with her back to me. Twelve hundred pounds. Looking for 1400. Anywhere else? 14 on table 24. 1400, thank you, sir. At 1400 now. At 14, back on table 24. Any further bids for the racing day? Table 24 has it at 1400. At 14. Any more? At 1400. 16, thank you, madam. 1600 now, sir. 16. Sir, 18 for you. 16 has it, 16, try one more sir. You go 18 sir, she'll go 2,000, and that's 400 quid more. 1,800 now, 1,800. Table 3, 1,800. At the moment, at 1,800. Over there, on table 24, for the racing extravaganza. 1,800 has the lock, table 24. Are you ready? Any further bids? 1800 pounds for Marie Curie. Last chance, 1800. Sold to you, table 24. Thank you, 18. We have a black mother of bush. We're going to. I'm going as fast as I can. I think you need to bid a bit more quickly because uh, we're running behind time. Lot number six, this wonderful. Mother of Pearl coffee table by Needed Pearl, designed by Marco Giovanardi. So there it is, how much for it? So we go a thousand pounds for this wonderful Mother of Pearl inlaid coffee table. One thousand I'm looking for as the opening bid. One thousand, start me at a thousand somewhere. Thank you, one thousand bid. I have an opening bid here of a thousand. Who's going to go twelve? One thousand, we're here to sell. One thousand, it's here. 1,000, 1,000, opening bid of a thousand pounds. Any more for a coffee table? At one thousand pounds, last chance for it. With you, sir, on table one. For a thousand pounds, 1,200, thank you, sir. 1,200. We need more, sir. You're quite right. Do you want to go 14? 13, thank you, sir. 13, lucky for you at the moment. 1,300. Table 24. 14 if you want it. 1500 now, sir. 15, thank you. At 1500, we're here at 15, sir. Let's go 16. 1600. 17, sir. We'll keep it once. No, it's not cheap, sir. 1600. See what? One more. 1700. 18, sir. 1800. How about another one more? 
you're going to retire. <laughs> well, you can retire gracefully, sir. Thank you very much. We're at 1800 on table 24. Sure, sir. 1800. Go on to table 24. Thank you, sir. 18. Okay. Now, those of you who don't like travelling, we are back in London. We're on the home straight, I promise you. Ten of, this is for ten of you. Lunch at Amanda Wakes' flagship store down the road. Each, each guest will receive a leather card holder. And each will receive a £100 gift voucher to spend in the store. Then you get to go to Michael John's Salon and Spa, where you get further discounts for your guests. And then you end your day at Donovan Bar at Brown's Hotel, where you can drink yourself silly. How much, please, for this wonderful uh, Amanda Wakey experience? Can we go in at 1,000? It's for 10 of you, don't forget. 1,000, 1,000 here. 1,000, 1,000, 1,200, 12 around the corner. 14, 16, 16 here. 16 I have, 16, 18, thank you, sir. 1,800 now here, 18. 2,000, madam, thank you. 2,000, 2,002. 2,004, madam. 2,002, it's in front of me. <laughs> That's only whatever it is ahead. £220 ahead. We're at 2,200 for all 10 of you. 2,002 in front on table 3. Any 2,004, thank you very much. 26, sir. 2,600. 26, madam. That's what we said last time. 26 has it here, thank you. At 2,600, 2,800. 2,008. I don't mind if you put against each other or yourself. 2008. I love it. 2008 on table three. Any further bits? How about another one, sir? Keep putting against sir. 2008 has it on table three. I'm selling 2008 for Amanda Wakely. And a million on table three. 2,800. Sold to you, Madam 2008. Now, not even as far as Amanda Waitley, we're going to take you up the road to the Dorchester. Again, two of you. You get to spend a night in a deluxe suite in, uh, at the Dorchester. You get to have a wonderful meal at China Tang, David Chang, Tang's wonderful restaurant at the Dorchester. And then the floor off that, you, we're going to take you down to see Wicked, Wicked at the Apollo in Victoria. So it's a night in a wonderful suite in the Dorchester, dinner at China Tang in the Dorchester, and chance of two of you to see Wicked down the road in Victoria and 500 please, 500 for this, 500 here, 500, 500 only, 500, 600, thank you madam, 6 behind, 600, 700 bid, 700, let's go, 800, 900, 900 bid, 900, one, are you still bidding over there? Yeah, 1,000 in the corner, at 1,000, anywhere else, for 1,000, it's over here somewhere, 1,200, 12, we've got 12 now, 12, how about 15, I can't see it, but we're here on table 3, at 1,200 for the Dorchester, and Wicked, and China Tang, 1,200 only, at 1,200, any further interest, at 12, selling straight in front of me, sir, 12 it is, 12, 14, thank you madam, 1,400 now, 14, sir, 16, Thank you, sir. 1600. 16. Don't give up so easily, madam. Show a bit of fight. 1600 straight in front of me on table three. And I'm selling at 1600. Last chance. It's going in front at 1600. Unless the lady wants a bit against you. So, thank you very much, sir. 16. seafood because we're going to take you to Billingsgate Market 
only two to go. The Newsgate Market, finest fish in the land. The bit of an early start, so you can get a choice as you're going to choose your own fish, which you're going to be cooking and eating later on. Morning and start at Billings Gate. Then you have a private tour of Chamberlain's Kitchen in Leadenhall Market, one of the world's great restaurants. You will get to have a breakfast there. Then you'll get to have a wonderful demonstration of how to cook the fish you just burnt. And then you get to eat it. So, Billions Gate in the morning, then breakfast, then the little demonstration, and then dinner. 500 beers for you. 500, what am I saying? It should at least 800. We'll start at 800. 200 pounds a head. None of you like fish, that's great. Well done, man. Devil Six takes me at 800, 800 now. 800, 800 for this fish extravaganza. 800, 800. No one else like fish in the room. 800. Well done, sir. Nine with you. 900, Devil Six. Let's go. 1,000. 900, 900. 1,000 behind me now. 1,000. 12, sir. 1,200. 1,200, madam. You were so close. But you're so far here at 12. Quickly becoming my favourite table. 1200 in front. Don't let me buy all the lots tonight. We're here at 1200. 7, 12. Thank you, sir. 13, lucky for you, sir. 14, not so lucky for you, sir. 14 has it. How about 15, sir? 14, we've got 14. It's not your day, sir, is it, at the moment? Let's face it. We'll get you something. We've really got one lot to go. 14 on table three. Gonna sell it. 14. Any more? 1400. Table three. Going, going. Where? 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 16. Well, 15. We've got 1500. Well done, right, right, madam. Thank you. On table 25. 16 now. He, see, you could have had it at 16, but no, let's go 17. 16, in your own time, madam. 16 has it, we're going to sell 1,600 once, twice, and 17 bid. 17 I have now, sir. Not yours quite yet. Come on, table three. Don't let me know, you're going for a hat trick. 18, thank you, 1,800 now. 1,800, 18, she's not looking at me anymore. 1,800, thank you, madam. We're back, table three, 1,800 pounds for Marie Curie. Round the room I go. No, surprise to late, madam, we're going here, 1,800. So, thank you, sir, 18. And sadly, we come to the way of the final lot. Jenny, Jenny Butler has very kindly given us her fantastic apartment in Verbier for a whole week. And it is for four of you. Verbier, as you all know, is only down the road from Geneva, up the mountain from Geneva. It's got wonderful shops, restaurants, nightclubs. And the scheme is not too bad either. So it's five minutes from the centre of town, you may get the buses and the lifts. Where else are you? It's got all the kind of kitchen you need for a week away. Shh. All you've got to do is get yourself there. But once you're there, it's going to be a fantastic week for four of you. And I'm told the snow is fantastic at the moment. So you've got to do it pretty quickly, otherwise it will all fall by the time you get there. So a thousand pounds for four of you to go to Verbier. Well done, madam. A thousand, twelve hundred. Twelve hundred on this side. Twelve, fifteen, eighteen hundred. Two thousand. Now you know what to do with auctions. It's a pity it's the last lot. But we're holding here at two thousand. 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 We got 2005 on table 5. 2008, thank you, table 26. 3,000. 3,000 pounds. 3,000. It's the last chance in the live auction. We're holding here. 
table 26 at 3,000 pounds for a whole week for four of you in Verbier. 3,000. Any further. Last lot. 3,002. 3,005. 3,005. In uncharted waters now. 3,005. Madam. 3,500. Put your glasses on. 3,5. One more. 3,005. On table 26. Last chance. Last lot. Going to go to table 26. 3,005. 3,008. You haven't got it yet, madam. It's over there on 38. You've got to put your hand up. Go 4,000, madam. It was blocked from you in the last second. 3,008. That's the Fabian at 3,008. Fantastic bid for Marie Curie. 3,008. Last chance, madam. Sure. 38. 38. Thank you very much for 3,800. Thank you very much indeed, That's an awful lot of money for Mary Curie. Thank you so much. And shh, don't forget, you've still got a few minutes to get out to that silent auction outside. Thank you very much indeed. skillfully extracting so much money from so many people in this room and I want to thank also everybody who um, did successfully thank you for your generous support. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it is now a privilege to introduce somebody who probably needs very little introduction. Is anyone like me old enough to have watched play school in the 1960s or 1970s? Oh yes, quite a lot of people. Did anyone watch Jack and Nori back then? Well, this man wrote all the jokes. And more than that, he presented Think of a Number and Other Think programs. He has been described as the cleverest man on TV. However, he's probably not the best dancer on TV. In 2012, he was one of 14 celebrities to take place in Strictly Come Dancing. He was unfortunately the first to be eliminated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm autumn lunch welcome to Mr. Johnny Bull. Wrong. 
my, my brain's not as young as it used to be. <laughs> I topped it last night. <laughs> I didn't lose either round, but if, if I ask you a question, we get the, the answer. The theatre on the south bank of the Thames in London that burned down in 1600 and frozen to death and was rebuilt, and now Shakespeare plays perform there, and I couldn't come up with the story. That is horrible. There was another one. There was a, a ski resort built between two lakes, and I went, Pass! Right? And when he came to the answers, he actually said a new pass on the show. A ski resort between two lakes, Interlaken. And you'll hear it on the program. I said, even the answer I couldn't remember was wrong. Because <laughs> I thought it was teen, because that's what two lakes as well. So that's the kind of thing I am. And I'm a celebrity, and it, and it is terrible. And I've had to enjoy it very much. This is always an epitome of what a celebrity is. We, we were shopping a few years ago um, in, uh, in Richardson, in, in the park, Oxford awesome Street. In um, Marks and Spencer, as you do first. And then we were coming out of Marks and Spencer's and going into Suffrages. Or a salty sandwich, probably. Anyway, that's what we were doing. And we just come out, and a guy grabbed me by the shoulders, honestly, and he said, Johnny Ball, Johnny Ball, you were my education. I said, okay. No, you weren't, you weren't, Johnny Ball, Johnny Ball. You, 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 you were my education. I said, okay. No, you weren't, you weren't. I said, Merry Christmas, mate, thank you. He said, oh, no, Merry Christmas, oh, no. you were my education. And I walked away, and as I walked away, he went, big issue! <laughs> and that is absolutely true. And my wife, my wife didn't make it to the ladies. Oh, my <laughs> um, so, so there we are. Uh, but I've had, I've had an incredible career. But what I've done most is in education. And, and, and I, I, love, I love being in education for my programs. When I tell you that, that um, when I went to school, I went to school in Bristol, and I was very good at top one, next to top, top in maths. And my parents moved 200 miles to Bolton. But I found them. And, and I moved as well. I went to Bolton County Grammar School. And then the first year, they put me in 2B, because I did very well in primary school, 2B. Next year, I was in 3C. Next year, I was in 4D. Next year, I was in lower 5E. Every word of this is true. The last year, I was in 5E, because they didn't have a 5F. And I was a failure. I got two O levels. One was last, the other one wasn't. And I was thrown out. And I said, well, sir, I want to be a writer. And my headmaster said, my form master, who do I like? Mr. Sandbach, he said, you just said, leave your language, English literature, and history, get out, you know. And uh, so I've been writing uh, for a long, long time now. And it all started then. And, and it's recovering from that. And it's just it's just a joy. But I've entertained the kids, and I've done a lot. I've got some pictures for you today. I've got some pictures. I've got to think, I think, I think I've got to do. I think I'm, I think I'm going to do this one first. That's the screen. So you've got a screen, so you can look. And that's, that's, that's in case you forget, forget where I was. Right. And there, this is a lovely picture. This happened, I spoke for the Duke of Edinburgh's Awards at St. James's Palace, just down the road. Um, you know, before, that's about 18 months ago. And it was a lovely, and you get about 300 people in a room, and I have to entertain them until the Duke comes around. They give you three minutes, three minutes, one minute, and then you have to shut up. And then when he's gone, you start again. So he came to me, he met people, he was great and great for, and he said to me, he just said to me, what are you going to do to And I said, well, sir, I'm going to be telling them I had a crush on your wife. And he said, what? I said, really? I was seven, perhaps eight, and your wife was 21, or 18, or so now, and it was Second like World War, 1944, 45, just before the end of the war. And she was in RAF uniform, driving a truck, which is what was required. And for me, she was the greatest heroine. She was the most popular. She's got to have there. I said, I think I will, sir. It's bit neck. What's happened? What's happened to me pictures? Where's my pictures gone? Oh, my pictures gone. Hell. <laughs> you saw the picture anyway. He said, you can't tell them that. I said, I think I will, sir. He said, well, I'm having her. And he grabbed my wife. And the junior better at 19 one, I think it was then, grub died, 
I was up at the door and the place erupted. Get in the pictures back and I lost it out of the don't, don't worry about that. Okay, so there they are. And, and, and that's education. I've read in television, and I had a great time in television in London. It was not a lot But after a time in television, I wrote five educational stage musicals. And I toured the country with the educational stage musicals. And in 2000, yeah, they were lucky on stage when we launched Tales of Mass and Legend. And we worked with 3,500 kids a day up and down the country. We never worked central London because you can't get school buses in and out of central London in any sensible way. It doesn't work. But every other city we worked, and as I said, we averaged 3,500 uh, a day. And it was just it was just phenomenal. Is it coming back? And uh, just for, and we did these shows. I'm going to tell you some of the sort of shows we did. We had 90 to 13 year olds, so 2,000. Now every time, is it me? Have I guessed the wrong thing? It could be me. Oh, that's it! Oh, thank you very much. Oh, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. Well, look at that one you listen to. Uh, don't ask what the fellas do in behind it. Anyway, uh, Like everything else I write, I always write too long, so I had to cut something. But my stage musical tells him that's a legend. I had to cut something, so I cut the interval. I know. Cut from 25 minutes to 15 minutes. So 2,000 kids have got to get out, have a pee, and get an ice cream and come back, no chance. So they're all shipping back and now they're glow. And we used to come out in the second half, three of us, me and two delightful friends who were hysterically funny. And we used to come out to get them back. It's good. It's good. You gotta get your pencil up, write it down. That's the best way we have found. Always use a pencil, never use a pen. So if you get it wrong, you can wrap it out again. And the kids go, oh my god. And then we did the last verse. In the garden of a young young Adam and Eve, I struggle what he find. Would you believe the kick out of to twenty of fingers and toes? Wish you on and you don't have it any closer. Could you get your pencil out, write it down? That's the best way we have found. Eve's are counting on your body, really is a strong. I don't say, why do I get it 21? Wow. And we come back at the nine, ten, and the mules go, it's Down the road. We never got one complaint ever. I asked teacher to bring it in. If it's okay, I'll try it. They don't it. They roar. And we did that. And from then on, the 2,000 kids, we got them again. Why? The wait for the next year. And it wasn't like that. <coughs> 20 minutes later, I got those kids and I'm saying, so that's what Isaac Newton did. He read Galileo's book on how things fall out, how all sides are there. He read Kepler's book on how the planets go around the sun. He said, I'll put the two books together. I'll call it gravity. We call him the greatest British scientist of all time. He read two books. So why can't you be a genius? That's what I tell kids. And I still do that today. And I show them this as well. To show them that you've got to see more than is there for you. This is not an auction. Uh, I have the original. Anybody who knows who produced this? Who produced this? Leonardo da Vinci is writing it backwards. Why did he write backwards? Do you know why he wrote backwards? To annoy his teachers. That's why. To say, I'm an individual, and that's what kids must do. Say, I'm an individual. And the teachers must spot individuality. And that's what you educate, educate a child from. The understanding of what is special about them. So when we have a curriculum where every child in the country, age 13, is reading from book eight, page 87 of the same book, on the second Thursday of November, it's just ridiculous. And it's not education at all. So we really got stuff across, the, um, and we use this. This is a very good example. Um, why is it a square? It's a bit warped on the screen, but it's actually a square because your height is the same as your reach, it's your stature. What point is halfway up the human body? I try this with so you tell me now. Please tell me, what point is halfway up your body? Your, your navel, your waist, your belly button. Wrong! And 80% of people tell you half of your body is your navel. It is your pubic bone. Just before things start to, go, start to get interesting. That's where it is. And the kids are more interested in that 
for knowing that it's wrong to say it's halfway on the body. That's halfway. We hit bone edge there. And we don't even know that. So do you understand? We don't open education up to our kids. We don't show them. We don't show them what is possible. So we have to. And that's, that's what I do. I'm going to do much more of that. Yes, I am going to sing another song. I'm going to sing a song. You've done me no harm, but I don't care anyway. Um, I, I, I set up characters, and it was lovely to be asked by Mary Curie to do this lunch. Um, you know, it, it really is a great honour and privilege because Mary Curie family is just, just amazing in what they do. And I'm so thrilled. And I set up a Mary Curie character, and she got an honorary degree in Glasgow. And a few years ago, I got an honorary degree in Glasgow, and I said that I received my degree. I'm standing on the same spot glowing with pride. And a hundred years ago, Mary Curie stood on this spot and just glowed. <laughs> and the trouble is, they laughed. And the truth of the matter is, we don't understand radiation. Why? Because it's not taught in schools. So what happens? We're all scared of radiation. But everybody knows that the medical fraternity would have never got anywhere near where they are but for our understanding of radiation. They were scared of radiation. What is going on? Why have we got people walking out education? Why have we got this idiotic system where what I'm going to show you now has been dropped out of the curriculum because it's so important. There's a man called John Dalton. I love John Dalton because he was a little pot-bellied man who came from Lancashire and he was a Quaker. So he's gone like this. No, it's not like that. I'm with the end of all. Why? And he had a fun little giggle. And he always spoke and he discovered the atomic theory. And he looked at it. He discovered that oxygen and nitrogen make up the atmosphere more or less with about 20% oxygen and 80% nitrogen. He thought, why? They must be happy. They link it together in a ratio of 4 to 1. Then he studied methane. Methane leaked out of the ground in Lancashire. Because the coal seams are just below the surface. And so it leaked out. So after it rained, or in a puddle in a field, you would see the gas bubbling through the puddle. So they would go out and light it, and the gas would light, would glow and, and, and burn with not a hot flame, a blue flame, but at least something you could warm potatoes or bread in. So that's what the kids used to do, and sit in the fields with the methane. There was no telling in those days. And that's what they did. And he went there, and he realized methane is carbon and hydrogen for every Every, uh, I know not all of you can quite see this, but don't worry. For every carbon, there's four hydrogens, and that's a hydrocarbon. Now they burn like that, but they won't burn when I move. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, oxygen. And when they burn, they get mixed up. And I had to put it to music for kids, and I did this. And I thought, what's John Dobbin like? John Dobbin was an idiot abroad, an innocent abroad, but also an idiot innocent abroad. And the only person I can think of him in the 20th century was like him was George Formby. A bit of a clown who always won in the end, always got a girl, right? And that's what Dalton was like, and he was a great success. And the foundation of all our chemistry is based on John Dalton's understanding of music. And I set it to music, and I'm going to sing it to you now. You're doing me no harm, but I'm going to sing it to you now. John Dalton's Atomic Theory. Ding, 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 when I found each element has its own specific way to honor. Every time you light a fight, has a flare drive higher and higher to understand just what transpires in my atomic theory. Whether it's coal or oil you use, whatever fuel of I don't use, it's hydrocarbons that you use. My atomic theory, now hydrogen's the element that we use the most. Carbon is the black stuff you get then when you burn the toast. Of course, each two will never burn. Without but all oxygen, a lot of things of them you'll learn in my atomic theory. You're going to get it, ding, ding, ding. Every time a fire you start, hydrocarbons split apart and then the oxygen takes part in my atomic theory. First, the carbon looks quite spare. Oxygen joins us a pair. Carbon dioxide is the air. My atomic theory, then hydrogen and oxygen join up as a team. And they become plain age to war, which builds up the steam. The result of this chemical change is nothing lost, nothing gained, but energy is always failing. My atomic theory. Thank you. Thank you. Everything, all life forms are based on the three things. Carbon.
carbon dioxide, oxygen and water. If you demonize one, like demonizing CO2, you demonize the lot and you're in for trouble. If you demonize CO2 and say it's polluting the atmosphere, you're missing the point the CO2 is half a second is there again. So when it rises, as soon as it reaches the upper temperature, it falls again. Why it's, which is why there's only one particle in every 2,500 in the atmosphere, and they've got us worried about it. People are getting us worried about it because they want to ruin capital, capitalism. They want to bring it to its knees. They want to stop us using fossil fuels because they want to bring society, and your society, to its knees. It's crazy when we're allowing it to happen. And that is a great deal. So be very aware of Greenpeace, Friends of the Earth, and the things they do. Now, that's as heavy as I'm going to get. I'm going to get a lot into now. I'm talking to you. But you see what I'm saying? In education, there's so much work to do to correct the wrongs. And now I learned that, um, what's his name, the, the leader of Europe has just sat, the science minister, because she believes in GM food, uh, crops. GM crops. There are 11 million GM crop farmers in the world. 11 million. And they're curing poverty. And they're curing wars. And they can cure Africa. But they're not at the GM crops. They're not allowed in Europe. Because Greenpeace and Friends of the Earth got us by the This is society we're living in. And it's just great. So who have they sacked? They sacked the leading scientists in, great, in, in Europe. I'm getting into a lecture I didn't know I was going to do. That's it. I've got to tell you about Strictly. I enjoy Strictly so much. Tomorrow. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I got to hear you. When I get to any of you, I'm going to say. But what I'm saying, we're going, we're going up to see dear Zoe. She, 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 where she gets the talent from, I don't know. But anyway, uh, we're going to see her tomorrow. It's so, so very sad that Claudia's daughter's had this accident. It's the most tragic one.